Look in a mirror. What do you see? You see yourself. You recognize your own face, your own eyes, your own identity. You know the person in the reflection is not someone else. It is you. This ability feels so simple, so fundamental, that we barely even think about it. But what if that was not the case? What if you looked in a mirror and saw a complete stranger? A stranger who mimicked your every move? A potential friend? Or a potential rival? For a long time, we thought this was the reality for almost every animal on the... And it led to one of the most fascinating questions in all of biology. Can a monkey recognize itself in a mirror? Before we reflect on this profound question, if you love exploring the secrets of the primate mind, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Monkey Low, your support helps us to keep digging into these amazing topics. And remember to like and share this video so we can all share in this journey of discovery. Now, let's see what happens when a monkey meets its own reflection. When you place a mirror in front of almost any monkey, the first reaction is predictable and fascinating. The monkey does not see itself. It sees another monkey. Its reaction is purely social. A dominant male might puff up his chest, bare his teeth, and charge at the mirror, trying to scare away this new bold challenger who is staring right back at him. A more timid monkey might show signs of fear or even curiosity trying to reach behind the glass to find this new individual. They will look for this new monkey completely unaware that the monkey they are looking for is themselves. They will use the mirror, but not for self-recognition. They might use it to look at things behind them or to watch other monkeys in the enclosure. They understand that the mirror shows reflections, but they never seem to make that final crucial leap, the leap that says, that thing in the glass is me. For decades, scientists used this observation to draw a clear line. They said, monkeys cannot recognize themselves. To prove this, they used a famous scientific experiment called the mirror test, or the mark test. The test is simple but brilliant. A researcher will anesthetize an animal. While it is asleep, they place a small, odorless dot of paint or dye on its face. Somewhere it cannot normally see, like on its forehead or its ear. Then, the animal wakes up in a room with a mirror. The question is, what happens next? If the animal sees the reflection, notices the new dot, and then touches the dot on its own face, it has passed the test. It understands that the dot in the reflection is on its own body. This is the gold standard for proving self-awareness in animals. And the club of animals that can pass this test is incredibly exclusive. Humans, after about 18 months of age, pass it. Our closest relatives, the great apes, like chimpanzees, bonobos and orangutans, also pass. Even some other highly intelligent animals, like dolphins and elephants, have passed versions of this test. So, what about monkeys? For decades, the answer was a simple, resounding no. Scientists tested species after species. Macaques, capuchins, marmosets, baboons. They all failed, and they failed in the same way. They would see the monkey in the mirror with the dot on its face. They might get curious about the dot on the reflection, even touching the mirror where the dot was. But they never, ever made the connection. They never reached up to touch the mark on their own face. This seemed to be a huge fundamental difference in consciousness between great apes and monkeys for 50 years. This was the accepted science. The book was closed. Apes could, monkeys could not. But what if the monkeys were not failing the test, but the scientists were failing the monkeys? What if we were asking the question in the wrong way? A group of researchers decided to challenge this long-held belief and what they discovered changed everything. They took a group of rhesus macaques, a species that had famously failed the mirror test for decades, and just like before, the monkeys failed. They showed no signs of self-recognition at all. But then, the scientists did something new. They decided to try and teach them. They set up a mirror and a chair for the monkey. They started by shining a high-powered light on the monkey's face. The monkey could feel the warmth and irritation, and it could see the dot in the mirror at the same time. This was the first link. Then they started training the monkeys. They would project a laser dot on a part of the monkey's body. 
for example, its chest. If the monkey touched the dot, it would get a food reward. They did this over and over until the monkey was an expert at touching the dot. Then they put the mirror in front of the monkey and projected the dot on its face. The monkey would see the dot in the reflection and after its training, it knew to reach up and touch the dot on its own face to get the reward. This was the key. They were training the monkey to connect what it saw in the mirror to its own physical body. They did this for weeks. And then they stopped the training and went back to the original, classic mirror test. They anesthetized the trained monkeys, put the odorless paint dot on their faces, and let them wake up in front of the mirror. What happened next was historic. The monkeys woke up, went to the mirror, and looked at their reflection. They saw the strange new dot on their face, and for the first time in the history of science, a monkey reached up and touched the dot on its own face. It inspected its fingers. It touched the spot again. It had passed the test. This shocking result split the scientific community in two. One side was amazed. They said this proves that monkeys, like apes, do have the fundamental brain power, the hardware, for self-recognition. It is just latent. They do not have the natural curiosity or the specific brain wiring to figure it out on their own, but the ability is there, waiting to be unlocked. It suggests that self-awareness is not a simple yes or no, but a spectrum. But the other side of the scientific community was skeptical. They said this is not true self-recognition. This is just a highly advanced trained behavior. The monkeys were not having a, that's me, moment. They were just following the rule they had been taught for weeks. When I see a dot in that shiny thing, I touch a dot on my body and I get a treat. The skeptics argued that true self-recognition must be spontaneous. It must come from the animal itself, not from human training. So who is right? The debate is still one of the hottest topics in primate science. While some monkeys can be trained to pass the test, the fact remains that no monkey has ever been shown to pass it spontaneously. On its own, it seems that in the wild, monkeys are just not interested in who they are. They are much more interested in what they are. Their self is not an individual identity, but a social one. A monkey's entire life is defined by its relationships. It is a mother, a son, a dominant male, a low-ranking female, a friend, a rival. Its position in the troop is the most important thing it can know. Perhaps their intelligence evolved to understand complex social hierarchies, not to ponder their own reflection. But the story does not quite end there. If the classic mirror test is flawed, maybe we need a new test. Some researchers tried this with capuchin monkeys, the highly intelligent tool users, they showed the capuchins videos. When the capuchins saw a video of a stranger monkey, they were very excited and agitated. But when they were shown a video of themselves from earlier that day, their reaction was different. They were much calmer, almost as if they were bored. This suggests that, on some level, they recognized the footage as familiar or predictable in a way that the video of the stranger was not. It is not a passing grade on the mirror test, but it is a fascinating clue that they might be processing a sense of self in a way we do not fully understand. So, can monkeys recognize themselves in mirrors? The simple answer is no, they do not spontaneously see me. But the complex answer is that they might have a hidden sleeping ability for self-recognition that we are only just learning how to find. Their failure to pass our test might say more about our own limited, human-centered way of thinking than it does about their intelligence. They remind us that consciousness is not a single point of light, but a vast and varied spectrum, and we still have so much to explore. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the monkey mind, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. It truly helps us continue to grow and bring more of these amazing stories to you. And we would love to know your thoughts. What topic about monkeys would you like to see from us next? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.